Hi, I've never felt so mommy vlogger. So <laughs> I was gonna have a video today that was gonna be like, hi, I finished my first semester of vet school. That's so exciting. Let's just chill. And I was gonna walk you through transporting 20 something kittens up into the Northeast, which I will still show you, but Bethany, <laughs> Bethany just called me. She never calls me except for when she finds kittens. So do you remember a few videos back where there were a couple kittens and we couldn't get them, but we tried really hard and we were unsuccessful. Well. Bethany did it! She was able to make contact with the person and got the kittens and said, Mary, I'm bringing you two of the sickest kittens I've ever seen. And I was like, okay, I'm out of school, so bring them over. <laughs> and she's going out of town this weekend, so. I don't know why I'm doing this. I, I'm a millennial. So I'm gonna show you what I do to set up the bathroom when I have little kittens come in like this. Let me run down really fast. She's on her way. I think she's probably, she called me 12 minutes ago. She's 30 minutes away. If we do the math, that means I have roughly 15 minutes to get everything together. So let's do that. Let me angle you down and then go mommy vlog. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. This is a shower. It's not blurred, but it is. Okay. Ready? <laughs> ah! Okay, first and foremost, we have pee pads because we don't, I don't think that they know how to use the bathroom, so. That's important. They know how to use the bathroom, they don't know where to go because currently they've just been peeing in the lawn. Huh. So stress. Next, we have a blanket. I don't like to start with too many blankets because typically because they don't know where to poop just yet. So a singular blanket is perfect because they will poop on it and you will need to change it. So let's just start with one. Blanket. Next. Peeing pad, obviously. Usually when kittens get sick, they don't eat, which means they lose a lot of blood sugar, but also they become really cold. Science. So we're gonna heat them up. And I like to, since Bethany's on the way, I like to crank this boy. Ooh, we got so good boy. I like to crank it pretty high. Where are you? Whoever does that in this bathroom did not think it through. Okay. You of course don't want to burn your kittens, so just like, be careful. <laughs> Monitor them. Okay, next. Caro syrup for blood sugar. Gonna help raise that blood sugar. B12 for life. My flea meds. I don't know why I hid them. They're just in a little Tupperware. We have syringes and needles for fluids, gloves because we don't know what they got, and then all I need to go is get my thermometer, and then we'll be good to go to bring them in and assess them. So that's it for right now. One thing that I am gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and pre-fill some fluids because there's a 10 out of 10 chance that they're dehydrated. That's just how this works. Bethany, come inside. So fluids will serve a couple functions. These are my non, this is not vet advice. I'm just letting you know what's happening. Fluids are gonna do a couple things. Number one, they're gonna give the kitten fluids. <laughs> they are also going to give the kitten some electrolytes. They love electrolytes. If they're usually low on fluid, they're usually low on some type of electrolytes. Not always, but it's a good thing to do. And then also, it's gonna give them some readily available sugar. Some sugar gives them some energy, but also allows their body to undergo some more thermal regulation, which means warm up. So that, plus some rehydration, plus some other magic like flea treatment and heating pad, all together, we're gonna slowly warm up their body temperature. Because if you recall, a while back, I talked to you guys about, this was a long time ago, the three R's of rescuing kittens. Reheat, rehydrate, then refeed. And you don't wanna refeed before you reheat or rehydrate because bad. That's all I'm gonna leave you with because I think Bethany's gonna be here in a minute. There's two of them. There's a little gray tabby, a little black boy, void. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. They should be here any second. So I'm just, I pulled some fluids. I have a little thing of warm water. You don't wanna give them cold fluids. Just gonna put the fluids in there. Don't worry, they get a new needle so everything's nice and sterile. And then we just we just wait for them to arrive. We're ready! Black one first. Oh my God. Yeah, I like this one had crust so thick over their nose. Yes. Do you wanna just, are you, do you need to like leave? No. Okay. Sit! I'm sorry, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sure they're riddled. Oh yes. Oh, baby. This is like even worse than Puck. <laughs> That's well, possible. There's one time he's left outside because it bit her. <laughs> 
So we gotta get that a young one. kitten. Yeah. So I need to get that one. Yeah. So I saw that one. I saw another tabby, and then. If you guys ever wonder why we really prefer to take black cats and tabbies, it's literally because of that. Three Siamese kittens yeah. out inside safe. Yep. This is no shade to her. This is just right. like a normal thing. People do this all the time. Yep. Meanwhile, hello, we're dying. Yes. Okay, just, just a little. Yeah. All right. So yeah, was not planning on taking any home. Mm -hmm. um, everybody looks mm -hmm. a little bit sick, but not dying. And then I heard a meow, and I was looking around, and then guess it was this one. And I was like sneaking up to them, and I realized they couldn't even see. Poor girl. I can't actually tell. You're so skinny. Oh. Are you my nervous? adrenaline is like pumping. Like my hands were shaking. Okay, ninety-seven-five. Not awful. Okay, good. This one was inside the fence, just like huddled up, meowing at me. Super oh, sweet. Skin and bones. Yeah, they're so but skinny. The black one was on the outside of the fence, so I had to go back around to McDonald's to grab that one. I did ask Val if she would run back by there and just look real quick and make sure I didn't miss anybody. Okay, this one's cold. No. Oh, that was a jump. That was a jump. Okay, both cold, but yeah. some not as cold as the other. So, first things first, let's rehydrate. I got some food, it's warm. What are we gonna name them? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure there's something good there. So when your sympathetic nervous system is activated, you use norepinephrine as, as your and epinephrine as mm -hmm. your um, neurotransmitters. What if we name them epinephrine and norepinephrine? <laughs> That's how I remember it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, she white. Wow. Are we shocked? No. Okay. I've seen much worse. All right. Ooh. So when we do the tent test, my friends, it's really hard to see at this angle, but that doesn't go down at all. No. They are not going good at all. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> okay, we're not going to name them epinephrine and norepinephrine. <laughs> <laughs> no one would get the joke. <laughs> so maybe a third. Yeah. The, the, the Siamese are bitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fight me, please. So that's that. Now let's just. I got the heating pad on blast. Hi. Hello. Oh my goodness. We're gonna clean up your face here. Oh baby. Please don't have a ringworm. I can deal with the cold. There you go. So clearly you have eyes. They're not doing great. Their body temperature is low, so they were between 96 degrees Fahrenheit and 97, which is low. Normal kitten should be between 100 to 102.5. They are so skinny. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever had one that skinny come in. They're so malnourished, so fragile. <sighs> so we're first gonna work to get them rehydrated and reheated. Once we do that, Bethany ran to the store really fast to pick up some baby food. Once we get her rehydrated, them, I think it's two girls. One might be a boy, but one might be a girl, but also kind of looks like a boy because her bones kind of look like blood parts. So we're just gonna try to, just try to get them going. Yeah, I hear Bethany, there's baby food. She has the baby food, baby food. I went to the store. So I'm very worried about their body temperature, obviously. And the heating pad is great, but it just has heat coming up from one level. So I'm gonna go get the, or I was gonna go get the incubator and bring it up here and shut it up in the bathtub because it's all I have right now. But I didn't have any distilled water, which is what I need to run an incubator. So I ran to the store to get a few things. I got some distilled water, some blankets, like some soft ones because that one is not enough. So we're gonna give them some extra ones. And some vegan cheese for nourishment and happiness. Ugh. Welcome. You're both here. Hi. Hi, boys. Yeah. We're still here. Okay, I'm gonna go get the incubator.
Okay, so they are where they are right now. Oh, the battery's gonna die, so let me just show you really quick. Here they are. Well, babies. I've decided on rocket and moon. Rocket for the void, moon for the tabby. Okay, let me go charge this battery and give them some more fluids. Be back shortly. Hello. <laughs> we have got to see. all over my face it's all i've ever wanted i feel like i'm dead inside and outside apparently being a 31 year old lady means you need to sleep a normal interval every day otherwise take her out otherwise you can't function as a person so someone left a comment the other day about stop honey about I need to make these videos a little less chaotic, like just sit down and tell a story, but I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to plan things. Anyway, so last night after I kind of finished showing you guys what was going on, I made the decision to go ahead and bring the two babies, Little Rocket and Moon, to the emergency vet where they are still currently. I got them warm enough to make the drive up. They made the drive up well, and then when they got there, they took them straight back and got them on supportive care. Thankfully, they are pan leukopenia negative, so whatever we're dealing with is either viral or bacterial. At least for now. We don't know, it could be another surprise. They're kind of up and down. In the middle of the night, one of the overnight vet told me that Rocket was having the most trouble and then by the morning, Rocket was better, a little better, and then Moon was, oh, they are. They are literally calling me right now. Hold on. Sorry, I would have shared that phone call with you, but my camera is in the bathroom because it needs to be sanitized. I don't know what happened. I turned 30 and now I just cry all the time. So they're both still alive. Moon, our tabby baby, she seems to be maintaining her temperature a little better and her blood glucose, meaning basically a measurement of if she's stable or not, seems to be fairly good. So they feel confident-ish about her. They still think she needs to stay the weekend. So that's with her. With Rocket, however, he is, she is not doing great. She can't maintain her temperature or her blood glucose, even with IV fluids, meaning even with giving glucose sugar directly to the blood supply of her body. Uh-oh, another phone call. Sorry, I am a popular gal and I have, look at this, I have a foof. Anyway, I forgot where I left off. Basically, the synopsis from the vet is Moon is doing better than Rocket. Rocket is not able to stabilize themselves hard like at all. So we're just gonna monitor. If we don't really see improvements in the next few hours, even small improvements, we're not, I'm not looking for a massive improvement. I'm just looking for a little improvement. If we're not seeing improvements in the next few hours, we might have to make the difficult decision. It's the hard part of teetering on what is unnecessary suffering and what is temporary suffering. Like what is gonna be okay? Like, are they just suffering temporarily, but they are improving, so we, we are pretty sure they're gonna get better? Or are they just suffering unnecessarily and we're only keeping them alive because we're like throwing everything at them. It's a tough call, it's a tough call. So we'll see, that is the update. If we are able to get the other kittens and whatnot, I will probably share that on my shorts or my TikTok or my Instagram. So make sure you're following along for that. If you've ever wanted to support what I do or Miss Dixie's, the link is in my bio to support Miss Dixie's kitten rescue. You can donate directly to the rescue. If you do send a super chat or anything on this channel, that does not go to the rescue. So fully transparent if you want to support the rescue please do it using the link below and you can help more kitties together so yeah that's the um that's the update i need to go sanitize the bathroom clean like a maniac and keep my fingers crossed for our little rocket and figure out how to get the other three so that's the end that's all that's all of the things that happened and had i hope you learned something i'm glad we got to meet them and i'm glad they didn't have to suffer outside overnight because it got really cold and it rained so all right i love and appreciate you guys i am so tired <laughs> i was not made for this i'm gonna go clean and then take a nap love you guys appreciate you guys see you on the next one Goodbye.
guys weren't ragdoll enough. Sorry.